Welcome back to the Talk and Chop podcast brought to you by the folks over at Chief of Staff KC. This week, we're joined by our good friend, Andrew Dallas, CEO of Pro Athlete. Andrew, thanks for being with us this week. How's it going, guys? Good. Going yep. pretty well. Yep. You having a good week so far? So far, so good. Yeah. Excited to be here. Right. Awesome. Uh, well, the Chiefs survived an overtime thriller uh, on Sunday, hanging on to beat the, the Chargers 23-20 to 20 yep. in overtime. Last... Uh, Last overtime victory was against the Ravens, which we'll obviously get into a little bit later on. Back in twenty, er, it was back in twenty eighteen though. Yep. Uh, so we had a last second quarterback change, very slow start from the offense to start the game, and then three separate game winners. Uh, and so we'll get into all that, as well as our fantasy picks of the week and our Ravens Monday Night Football preview. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but first, before we get into all that, uh, we'll bring you our positions of the week presented by Chief of Staff KC, your trusted local talent scouts. Uh, we're a recruiting firm in Brookside, and we'll find you the best accounting and finance, HR, ops, sales, admin, and marketing talent Kansas City has to offer. Um, so, Lucas, what do you got for us this week? Yeah, well, per the last two weeks, accounting and finance, uh, specific focus recruiter here. So we're going to go with all public accountants, big yeah. four, lead eight, any public experience whatsoever. We have some exciting jobs for you right now. So reach out, you know, specifically, you know, if you're looking to go into potentially internal audit. Or if you're wanting to get more into the operational accounting side of things, that's really where we're going to be able to market you. And we also have some unique one-offs that you know I would love to, to kind of pitch your way. Now, we have a few, so you got to come and talk to me first. Uh, reach out to Bryce Shepard, Casey Wright as well. Those are also my colleagues, and, and we'll get you in the mix on a few different opportunities. Cool. Um, yeah, this week on our HR and operations side, I'm uh, looking for superintendents and project managers. Uh, in order to be considered for these jobs, you got to have at least five years of experience in each position. So if you're a project manager, still got to have those five or two to five years of superintendent experience, you know, kind of that next step. Uh, but then also looking for industrial big box experience with a proven track record of successful projects. So I'm um, going to be some pretty, uh, you know, extensive buildings going up here in town. And uh, this client of ours is going to be looking to hire uh, multiple people here yep. this mm-hmm. fall. Uh, Andrew, I believe you have some positions as well. You're hiring for at the moment. Yeah, you want to go to run that? Yeah, as well. Yeah, we're looking for two product development positions. One for our apparel side, uh, routine baseball, and then we're looking for product development on the sporting goods side. So bats, gloves, um, another uh, sporting goods thing that we're going to talk about here shortly. Cool. So yeah, awesome. All right, be cool. Well, those are the positions of the week. Uh, Let's uh, let's get into. uh, yeah, you want to start us off? Yeah, why not? Right. So I kind of want to get into talking shop with you, Andrew, sure. right? So, you know, you're the CEO of Pro Athlete. You have an awesome story. Emerson's given me some details, but I really want to hear it from the man himself. And you've worked yourself up from an entry-level marketing associate to the CEO. So quite the path there. Now, can you walk us through that journey and how the company has grown along with you throughout those years? Sure, Yeah. Bribery is how I got yeah. to the top. Uh, no, yeah, it's just I'm a product of a really good organization. You know, yeah. a lot of people have come through there, over 400 and some people um, over the years, and have always been the same philosophy. It's sure. get in here and you can grow. You know, we'll give you whatever opportunity you want to go take. We don't have like a really strict org structure and stuff like that. Okay. It's just get in and create your positions. I think I had seven or eight different positions within two years because sure. I just it's just a great organization to be at freedom is like a big part of it Mm -hmm. and as long as you can add value um the company will recognize it and let you kind of do whatever you want and i'm a very real example of that you know Mm -hmm. a lot of people in our management uh, group had the same story a lot of people started answering phone calls and are now Mm -hmm. managers of this area and that area you know what i'm asking how long was that stretch timeline wise yeah so i've been with the company this will be my 11th year okay um but you know, been the CEO for a couple of years now, okay. had a COO title for mm-hmm. three or four years. And then I actually had the title of no title. That was the title. Um, so you try to recruit for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, just we just kind of don't do anything by the book, you yeah. know, a pro athlete. But we do have a lot of fun and um, you're able to make your own path. Sure. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So the last time we talked was actually back in March. Uh, and that's right at the beginning of COVID. Uh, and we, one of the things we went over was your uh, Safe at Home campaign. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you partnered with Routine Baseball, Just Bats for that, uh, as well as like Made in KC and Sandlot Goods locally to, to kind of get those distributed. So how did that uh, campaign end up turning out? Is it still going on? Can you walk us through that? Yeah, <laughs> I thought it turned out really great. You know, with Sandlot Goods and Made in KC, we were able to um, fund a lot of masks mm-hmm. um, for medical professionals and first responders. Yeah. 
people like Joel Goldberg, Rex Hudler, Mike Matheny, Ozzy Smith. We've yeah. crossed state lines. Um, well, we didn't, that's not state lines. We yeah. stayed in the state. Yeah. Went over to St. Louis. <laughs> um, and, you know, it was just really cool to kind of see everybody come and help us um, with that initiative. Yeah. So a lot of good influencers. Bob Kendrick, mm-hmm. another one. But we... We were their number one um, supporter in that effort Good. for Made in KC. So it turned out really well. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, how many masks roughly did you guys? Uh, you know, I don't know the exact number, but I think it was somewhere around forty or 50,000. Wow. Um, That's incredible. And okay. I wow. think learning a little bit more every day about yeah. the numbers coming out and where the masks have ended up. But they're continuing down that path, mm-hmm. um, continuing to make masks and stuff like that. And we kind of put a stop to um, making the shirts. Mm-hmm. But it was it was a pretty good initiative for everybody involved. Nice. Yeah. Well, congrats. Thank you. Um, you know, so I, real quick, I just want to dive in. So pro athlete, I was doing a little research, teamed up with the Negro Leagues Baseball yeah. Museum, right? And yeah, so you guys produced this uh, yeah. storied series yeah. that you've been releasing over the past few weeks. Now, can you give us a little insight? Tell us a little bit more about the project and then the goal behind that? You bet. Uh, it's one of my favorite things we've done, you know, during COVID Mm -hmm. just with all the social justice going around right now and stuff like that, we wanted to find a way to bring the educational piece from the museum out and get it out to the public Sure. because one, there's a pandemic going on and Mm. people couldn't get to the museum and two, it gave us an opportunity to educate people, you know, and it's not just a a museum about baseball. It's a civil rights museum. If you ever um, have Bob talk about it Mm -hmm. and we tried a couple different things, and then we landed on this storied 22 uh, stories about the Negro Leagues in 22 weeks, uh, 22 because that's Buck O'Neill's jersey number, mm-hmm. and we got the best storyteller in Kansas City. Uh, no offense to anyone else who's a good <laughs> storyteller, but he's pretty dang good, and he, it's just amazing. Every week, you know, I made myself not listen to him because I, I could right now, mm-hmm. but I don't want to. Sure. I want to listen to him as everybody else does, and every week I'm just amazed. Yeah. And the support we've got from people who's, oh, my gosh, this is so great. Not just in Kansas City, but nationally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's been pretty impressive, you know, to see. And it all goes to our video team. They put it all together. And then Bob, you mm-hmm. know, just he's just so good. Yeah, so, yeah. definitely. Um, awesome. So uh, one other thing I wanted to talk about is earlier this summer, you had made the decision to uh, let your team work from home for the rest of the year. And, you know, there are a lot of small business owners right now kind of, uh, weighing that decision right now, whether or not to, uh, you know, bring their employees back, you know, keep them at home the rest of the year, do a flexible schedule, you know, it's so up in the air at yeah. the moment. And so uh, I kind of want to talk to you about your decision making process going through that and, and really what led you. I mean, you guys have an awesome facility up north and like uh, you have an awesome culture as well. One of the Kansas City's top or you know best places to work, um, and, you know, kind of what led to that decision? Yeah, so I don't remember when it was, but pretty early on, yeah. we were one of the first companies, I think, to kind of say, we're going to be closed for the rest of 2020. Because what I called it was the COVID roller coaster. Mm. Okay, things are looking good. Let's open back up. Ah, they're getting bad again. Let's close. That's mm-hmm. tough on employees. You know, that's, that's just a tough ride to go on. We're fortunate that we're an e-commerce company. Mm-hmm. So we can stay closed and most of our people can work from home. Right. Uh, you yeah. know, the peop- the companies that can't, you know, I, I don't envy them in, in that because it would be a really hard decision. So mm-hmm. I think we're fortunate in the fact that we are an e-commerce company. We're able to do that. But it doesn't come easy because all the stuff we love about our organization, a lot of it's in the building. Yeah. Um, you know, the chef, the swimming pool, batting cage, racquetball court, the bar, um, the spa, all those things. Yeah. You know, they're just sitting there idle. But we also learn that that's not all we are as a company. That's that's the stuff people talk about and read about, but our core values and the people, that's really what our company is sure. all about. Mm-hmm. And so that's really, you know, just been the main focus for us. But everybody and every business owner who's having to make this decision, it's hard. I think yeah. you got to do what's what makes the most sense for you and your business because mm-hmm. it's not a cookie cutter, you know, answer. Yeah. Everybody's business is going to be a little different. And, uh, you know, just get behind your company and trust the leadership that they're doing it the right way because – Anybody who's in business, I hope, has the best interest of their employees at, at heart. And I truly want to believe that because yeah. I know how that's how we operate. So mm-hmm. um, good luck to everybody out there making those decisions as we continue to try to open up. Yeah. Good yeah. deal. I appreciate that insight. Yeah, yeah. I have, I have one more follow-up question. Yeah, to that. go sure. for well, it. So, like, uh, now that everyone's been working from home for so long, obviously you guys have an amazing culture there. Yeah. How, how do you keep that going? You know, are, are you consistently reaching out to everyone? Are there any events you guys are doing? How, how do you keep that, you know, collaboration, that team mentality together? Yeah, great question. We've done a lot of different things. Um, some wellness challenges. Uh, we did these 
meetings where if people were exercising, they could call in and I would be walking, doing a walking meeting and they could ask me any question they wanted. <laughs> um, it was, I like that. It was, yeah, it was, it was crazy. Um, back when we did it, it was really cold outside and raining and a bunch of stuff, but it, it was good because um, they were scared. You know, yeah. they, they didn't know, are there pay cuts coming? Well, maybe, we don't know. Thankfully, we didn't have to do any of that. We were able to keep every single employee, but it, it was difficult. We did have uh, biweekly all staff meetings, mm -hmm. and we had people like Joel Goldberg, Tommy Hotteby, the pitching coach for the Cubs, mm -hmm. uh, Bob Kendrick. They would come on and uh, talk to our employees about you know their life and what's going on, and just just kind of making everybody take their mind off of all the negativity. Yeah. We that was the one thing I think that got all of us. I, I kind of drew a line in the sand and said, okay, it's here. COVID is here. Mm -hmm. It's not changing for a while. Let's quit feeling sorry for ourselves. Like, do you want to be the company that just complained and went out of business? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to be the company that wrote a new chapter and came out with a new product and, you know, found a way to push through? And I'd rather be the second. Yeah. So that's kind Love of what that. we're working on right now. And thankfully, you know, sales and everything are back and yeah. we're ready to go out and, you know, make good on that promise that we had back early in COVID. Right. Sure. No, that's yeah. exciting. And that's actually going to kind of intertwine with <clears throat> this hybrid question next. Yeah. So we're going to ask every guest for a recent first down um, sack and then Hail Mary you've had, right? So, you know, your, your first down is going to be a, a small bit of success you've had with pro athlete. Your sack is going to be a recent setback or failure that you've learned from. And then the Hail Mary, Pat Mahomes style, as we discussed mm. last week, <laughs> is going to be a, a giant, big, hairy goal, something that you guys are shooting for or looking to obtain you know, for the year. And so I know you kind of touched on it, but could you specify yeah. three of those? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, the first sounds like a recent small win that kind of leads to bigger wins. Yeah, for, for right? sure. Kind of moving the chains. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, you guys are using all the football talk and yeah, the baseball, yeah. so I'm filtering that <laughs> into baseball. So that's yeah, a single, right? Friends, okay. Scott Havens yeah. and, and Joel <laughs> like to do the single double home run, yeah, okay. so we, we kind of stole that. Okay. Start with a bunch. I'm translating it in know? my head, so, you yeah. know. But no, uh, first down, you know, I think we're really proud of uh, being recognized as a top 10 finalist for the Small Business of the Year yeah. Award in Kansas City. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I think that's just a really good culmination of not just this year, but you know, 30 plus years of being in business, being recognized alongside some great companies in the middle of a pandemic when a lot of negativity is being thrown around to have, you know, the community recognize your company for what you really stand for. I think it meant a lot. And that, I think, projects us to move and continue to march down the field, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, that's probably the thing I'm most proud of. Nice. Um, Sack. sack yeah. yeah it could be a botch yep. snap we had someone do that last yeah. week so. <laughs> pass ball yeah. baseball okay um, <laughs> there you go. so i think for this one you know as much as we just talked about our culture and everything and how we've tried to stick to our core values i'll be completely honest it, it was really hard during covid to because we always put the employees first and money is never at the forefront of a decision it tested me this time because the numbers look so bad mm. and you had these moments where you're like i don't know what we're going to do in march and april and, and I just remember talking to Scott, our um, chairman, and he just said, stay true to the core values. So the, the sack, I think, comes that I let myself slip for a second. Yeah. Um, hmm. And, you know, it, it, it was weird because it didn't feel natural. Mm. With all the thoughts that were coming into my head, it's like, man, we're, we may have to let people go. It's like, nope, get creative. Yeah. You know, you can do this. And so we took a step back, looked back at our core values and you know, went, went forward. So, awesome. Yeah. Hail Mary. Hail Mary. Um, <laughs> so something that we want to get done by the end of this year, our Hail Mary, we want to be ready to launch our new pickleball line. Um, that's nice. the new the new thing that we're going into by the start of 2021. Okay. So the, the whole you know future of pro athlete is built around taking brands, either buying them or starting them, and plugging them into the machine that we've been building for 20 plus years. And the next thing we're going to look into is pickleball. Um, nice. It's just that sport that's – People are kind of curious about yeah. it's. Hey, that looks fun, and Chicken and Pickles doing a great job mm -hmm. of helping grow the sport. We actually researched it a couple years ago mm. and hired a company to go research it. And we've just been sitting on it. And it's like okay, it's time. Yeah. Um. So we're we're excited for that. It would be paddles and apparel. Okay. And we'll just Sweet. plug it into our machine yeah. and get rolling. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's spreading like wildfire right yeah. now. I'm sure that'll. I'm sure that'll be pretty successful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Without That's the hope. Well, uh, you know, that kind of wraps up, uh, you know, the business side of things. I appreciate you uh, giving us a brief look inside, you know, yeah. you know, day to day in the life of, uh, you know, CEO here in town, you know, during these trying times. So thanks for sure. being a, a great local Kansas City leader. Absolutely. Yeah.
appreciate it. Well, time to chop it up. Let's so it. Let's, let's get into let's it. She's it. surviving in L.A., 23-20 nail-biter. You know, it wasn't the way we planned it. I think your prediction, which we'll get into in a little bit, was oh, little, extremely little, close. Little, yeah, little, little, I want to hear, <laughs> hear more about the prediction. Yeah, yeah. so, you know, first overtime win since the Ravens game, as you previously mentioned. You know, we like to give our guests the first take, a takeaway from the game, or take, however you want to go about it. So, Andrew, with that being said, time's yours. Man, I mean, I think there's only one way to start this. Butker, right? I mean, yeah. how? <laughs> Let's go. How? I mean, that was insane. Yeah. Like cannon on his leg. It's unbelievable. Oh I mean, I feel like we have so many people with the Chiefs that are the best at their position, and he's proven that. You know, yeah. again, obviously with the Ravens, there's another really good kicker on that yep. side coming up. But I mean, how clutch is that guy? Yeah. You know, and so I thought that was really impressive. You know, I thought I, I think it would be very hard to prepare for a changing quarterback mm-hmm. without knowing. You sure. know, think about it. I'm preparing to talk Chiefs and business, and you guys say, hey, we're going to talk about golf. And so yeah. it's like, whoa, that's not that easy. <laughs> right, I mean, right, right. could we talk about it? Yes. Yeah. Did they adapt? Yes. But, I mean, that's that's tough when you're planning for one guy. And then, I mean, the announcers didn't even know. All right. You know, yeah, and it was yeah. just like, what? And then we come to find out what happened. <laughs> I don't even know if the team doctor even yeah. knew what he did. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. So is the team doctor affiliated yeah. with the Chiefs or what? I mean, you know, that's I don't the think thing. he has a job yeah, anymore. Exactly. <laughs> that's true. Justin Herbert's dad, I think we heard from earlier. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. So, but, you know, I thought I thought that would be really tough. And then, not to mention, he's a rookie. You don't have a lot of, like, pro tape right. on this guy. You've got college yeah. tape to look at and film. But um, that and then, man, that D-line of the Chargers, that's that's tough. Yeah. So, yep. you know, tough day there. But when you got the best player in the world, yeah. it, you end up winning that game. So, yeah. I thought that was pretty awesome. Love it. Yeah. yeah, we came alive, you know, the at the right time to win the game. But the defensive woes, like, at the beginning, right? We just could not seem to really get their number. We, we took a step back from, from week one when we looked okay. Poor tackling. Lack of discipline led to really long drives and chunk plays mm-hmm. you know, from the Chargers, which is just so uh, nerve-wracking. And then I believe the defensive success rate was under 40%. In the entire first half, really? so looking oh, wow. looking absolutely terrible with like a fourteen percent with less than two minutes for the half. So I know I didn't have a ton of confidence. I'm always going to believe in the team, but you guys just kind of have that eerie feeling of like what was. Yeah, I mean when on? they were having like ten minute drives, I mean we knew going into it Austin Eckler was going to eat us up. I mean yep. he always does, uh, but I mean Joshua Kelly out of the backfield catching passes, mm-hmm. like I mean they were just dinking and diving and just you know like Herbert used his legs a lot too. Yeah. Just, yep. I mean he got the touchdown obviously, but mm-hmm. yeah, I mean it like. We're obviously missing some support in the middle. Um, you know, getting MV Pinnell back, which we'll talk about, is going to be, be awesome. a huge help. But, I mean, man, we could not stop the run to save our lives. Well, and so Frank Clark, he left with a sickness, an yeah. illness yeah. to his we stomach. To figure out what that was. He said he, he tweeted out, shout out Twitter, you know, thank you, Tom Martin, for that reference. But <laughs> as far as, you know, his illness, he said it was hydration. He really? had to get okay. an IV. Okay. He wasn't he wasn't ready to go there. Um, Taco Charlton came in mm-hmm. and he had a twenty five percent pressure rate in his in Frank Clark's absence, which was good. And then Mike, is it Dana? Yeah, uh, I believe yeah. he's a rookie, so he Dana, came in and had fourteen percent pressures right behind him. So those yeah. two guys stepped up, but it still hurt. Um, you know, a silver lining though is you know that they get those reps. Sneed stepped up in a time mm-hmm. of need a when he picked that second. Jerry Sneed, yeah. Jerry <laughs> Sneed, man. So that was exciting to see that, but we need to put it together for what we'll talk about later, which is going to be our Monday night game. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the slow offensive start didn't really help either. Um, you know, with them taking so much time off the clock, you know, I, I don't really know if I think what's happening is. Andy Reid didn't want to show any of his cards at Here's all. That. I mean, I think we were game planning for Tyrod Taylor. We kind of knew, uh, you know, what we were getting into with him. And so, like, our offensive attack would probably be based around that and, you know, possessing the ball and all that. But with them taking so much time off the clock with Herbert in there, um, we kind of had to, you know, adjust. And so, you know, the first drive, it's always Andy Reid, all right, let's see what they're giving us and, and kind of adjust from there. But obviously, you know, like you mentioned, with that that front line, uh, they were just getting pressures all day. It seemed like Mahomes was just running for his life all day long. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, as I've been, you know, kind of researching, I – a bunch of people were saying that Mahomes is just dropping back in the pocket, like nine yeah, and a half, I've 10, 11 too. yards, and then he's just not helping his tackles at all. Um, who get, Like Mitchell Swartz, what what was that? that Bosa you know, had his number, right? Yeah. That was a bummer. I know. Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard blocking one of the best in the sure. league all game long like that, and he does it week in, week out, mm-hmm. uh, you know, getting their best, ta- or best um, defensive end. But, yeah, I mean, for the Ravens game, obviously we'll get into it, but we, we cannot start that slow. Um, it's uh, – it's been pretty bad. And then, uh, you know, 
again, like we said, best player in the world, most clutch player in, in the whole <laughs> league. You can never count him out. Um, you know, Mahomes going deep to Tyreek. That's his 18th 50-yard uh, touchdown since he's entered the league in 2016. The that next closest. All right, all right, here's a what? piece of trivia for you. You oh know the goodness. next closest person or uh, amount of touchdowns after that? Gosh, I wouldn't even have a guess. Uh, it's, uh, it's Derrick Henry with nine. Oh, my gosh. So he's half. Half. Uh, oh it's my. just absolutely insane. That guy it's is a game blowing. changer. Oh and so, uh, you know, that meme of, yeah. screw it, Tyreek's down there somewhere, yeah. that thing never dies because it's so true. I mean, uh, I think what uh, he said at the end of the, the, the game, Mahomes did, is that he's like, as long as I throw the ball past the defense, Tyreek's going to catch it. And yeah. so I think he just kind of reared up and chucked it. And, you know, luckily he rolled into the end zone. So yeah. Another awesome. what mind-numbing stat, we discussed this a little bit earlier, but Chiefs are now 6-0. and when trailing by 10 plus points. Yeah. It's unreal. So just want to spot teams some points. Yeah. <laughs> you guys start with 10. We'll get yeah, yeah. So maybe that slow start doesn't That's, matter. Yeah, yeah exactly. So. That's true. Uh, but yeah, I'm uh, obviously Harrison Bucker uh, hit a 53. Uh, we got a false start penalty, 58 mm-hmm. in the ice to kicker, and then 58 to cap it. Uh, I think he said he got pissed off every yep. time. Oh, yeah. uh, and that just helped yeah. him out. And like you listen to him talk after the game about like everything that goes into his like aiming point and the rotation of the ball. Like this dude is just he just yeah. thinks on a whole different yeah. level i've never heard a kicker talk that way before and he's on pat mcafee's podcast talking yeah. about it in, in college his career high was 53 and he hit a 53 yard to clutch it to go to overtime he said at the beginning of the game dave tobe and him had a you know we're going out there and practicing he said he was good from 67 or 68 and then at halftime, he was good from 70 off the tee <laughs> that's what i was gonna say what? there were kicks where it looked like he would be good from 70. oh yeah like, I, he's just Chickens. unbelievable yeah like and his story, like, remind me, picked him up. Off the off uh, Panthers practice Panthers, squad. yeah. Thank you, Panthers. Appreciate Thank that. you very much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Wow. I mean, they had Graham Gano at that point. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, that sucks. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, credit to Brett Veach. You know, that yeah, guy man. consistently just, you know, uh, wows everyone with, you know, some of the smaller moves he makes that really do have a, you know, larger impact. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and Harrison was the AFC special teams player of the oh, week good. that just got yeah. announced as well. So. Um, well, we got the victory, right? But we didn't, again, didn't come away unscathed. <clears throat> Sammy Watkins, that targeting shot that didn't get called, and yeah. Reed was pretty pissed off. He came away with, you know, hopefully is not a concussion, could be in concussion protocol. Uh, Frank Clark with the illness should be back out there. Daryl Williams had an ankle issue, and then Antonio Hamilton with the groin. Yeah. Um, but I don't necessarily know the repercussions just yet. Hopefully we'll see them all back soon. Yeah, I don't um, know about it. Antonio Hamilton's the one I'm worried about because we're just so thin in the secondary right now. Having him out, um, it definitely showed. You know, Fenton is good. Uh, Sneed's good. But then you, you put Bo Pete Keys in there, who's uh, what, a seventh-round draft pick. Yeah. Thrusting him into that role. He did well, but, again, it's not, uh, you know, it's not Bashad Breeland. It's not... Uh, you know, some of our better guys. So uh, we'll see how that goes with uh, the Ravens mm-hmm. uh, attack here coming up. But uh, before we get into that, let's uh, let's talk fantasy. Some of the right. biggest names in fantasy took a hit this week. Uh, Saquon Barkley, Christian McCaffrey, Drew Locke, Cortland Sutton, Jimmy Garoppolo, <laughs> Raheem Mostert, Devontae <laughs> Adams, just to name a few. Like, there are a lot more on top of that. Uh, but Andrew Lucas, let's get uh, your favorite fantasy plays of the week, and then I will uh, give you some recommendations on if you did lose a starter to in your lineup. Uh, who are a couple of streaming starts uh, uh, that you could pick up off the waiver wire this week? Yeah. So Andrew, what do you, you want uh, play, like people to play this week coming up? Is that yeah. What you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. So um, some of this is probably going to be biased because these people are on my team. But, Go ahead. Um, yeah, of course. I, I just got to keep rolling with Kyler Murray. Yeah. Um, I think he's they're stud. playing the Lions. Lions mm-hmm. defense hadn't looked that great. No. Uh, I think he's going to have another just great game. So he'd be one. And then you know I was doing a little research. Derrick Henry. He's Got off to kind of a slow start, mm-hmm. but going against the, I think the Vikings defense this Ooh, coming they week, and they so looked bad. horrible. Yeah. And it, I just, you can't keep that guy down. I think three straight weeks. So mm-hmm. um, those would be two of them that I'm kind of keeping my eye on this week. Cool, good deal. Yeah. Um, so I, last week I did a little bit of uh, players that may be like on the fringe, right? Do we start them? Do we sit them? What's going on there? So we're gonna do a flex start of the week with Edelman. I don't know if you guys saw him with Cam Newton. People thought, is he gonna return to form? Cam, I think, gave him a career high in, oh, no in way. yards. I mean, this guy blew up for like 26 points. Um, you know, and I can see I, hear, I see him continuously doing so moving forward. The Raiders, exploitable pass defense, kind of like you mentioned the line, just a little softer there. So start Julian Edelman in your flex. Um, sit Naeem Hines. I mm. talked about last week. I picked him up. Yep. Marlon Mack went down, picked him up for the Colts. Like, oh, he's going to do great, right? 
No, Jonathan Taylor season. Taylor. Yep. Yep. One point four points in my flex last week. That hurt. Uh, took the first. <laughs> took the first loss there. So <clears throat> getting my Hines on the bench. Oh. Um, and then for waiver pickups, I know you're going to touch on that, mm. but uh, I did lose Christian McCaffrey to an injury. So if you haven't already targeted Mark Davis, that is going to be the true uh, replacement there. He's going to be a, the lone running back. You know, not in a committee of any sort. And so mm. I think if you're in a free agency acquisition budget type of league where you're betting on on these players. Probably 20 to 25 percent of your budget. Go ahead yeah. and throw it in there. But those are gonna be my start and sits and cool. potential waiver pickup. Yeah, uh, last week I, I said to sit James Conner, but I ended up starting him in my <laughs> league. <laughs> so sorry about that. Uh, he just kind of progressed throughout the week and he, he he did a lot better. So my apologies for that. Um, yeah, don't take our advice. On yeah, the show. <laughs> do the opposite. Uh, but do this week because yeah, we're all yeah, yeah, exactly. we're hot now. We're due. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah. So I mean, if you if you are like me, I have four teams, not five. I figured that out. Um, but if you're like me and had a number of stars get. Uh, uh, injured and uh, you're looking for some spot starts. Uh, a couple people to pick up as replacements, like I mentioned. Uh, Mike Davis for Christian McCaffrey, yep. uh, mm-hmm. like Lucas mentioned. Deion Lewis uh, for mm-hmm. Saquon Barkley. He came in and had about 15 points last week, uh, but they also, the Giants also just signed uh, Devonta Freeman. Yep. Uh, it's going to take. Yep. Yeah. Should I have done that? No, no, I think that's a great okay, call. Good. But yep. in the good. short term, I think Deion Lewis is going to be the play Got just it. so they can exactly. get Devonta Freeman kind of familiar with the office. And then, um, you know, next week, you know, a week after, I think it'll just be the Freeman show. But uh, yeah, that's a smart play. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Raheem Mustard's out, obviously. So Jarek McKinnon should be available in a lot of leagues. Uh, he could Coleman be, is even out as well. Yeah, Coleman's um, out with a knee, So too. he's going to be the true back there for a couple weeks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, so a couple other people that should still be on waiver wires um, that you can look into if you need a spot starter, too. Russell Gage of the Falcons, he's their third receiver, uh, but he's been dominating this year. I mean, that that Falcons offense is, hasn't skipped a beat. They've been crazy, mm-hmm. uh, even though they just lost in an epic fashion. Yeah. That was just hilarious. <laughs> they know how to do that. Falcon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not the first. Uh, <laughs> and then Adam Humphrey, Humphreys of the Titans. Uh, while A.J. Brown's out, Corey Davis is going to be their number one, and Adam Humphreys will um, uh, be number two for a couple starts until he's back. So monitor that uh, um, A.J. Brown inju- injury, and then if you need a receiver, pick him up. But then a couple QBs I'm keeping my eye on. I think Gardner Minshew is a great pickup. Um, and if you stream quarterbacks, like if you don't have one of the best ones, he's definitely a, a great pick. I honestly mm-hmm. think he's a franchise QB, and I think he could you know, continue to be really uh, good in this league. He's put um, up numbers this year. Yeah, I know. I mean, he's he's projected to get like 20 points this week. Uh, and this it's, week, it's so. the battle of the mustache versus the beard yeah. 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 on, yes. on Thursday. Yeah. So Fitz we'll magic. Go Fitz magic. <laughs> <Yes. baby. laughs> we'll always cheer for Fitz magic. He, he goes, he said something. He goes, well, if he thinks the beard is better than the mustache, we'll let him have that because he's my elder, yeah. but he's very much yeah. so my elder. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then to wrap it up, just a couple of QBs I'm keeping my eye on again. Uh, Justin Herbert, obviously, yep. we all know how well uh, he played last week, but I'm also monitoring Tua. Um, he might be a good stash for the rest of the season based on how they the, mm-hmm. the Dolphins play this week because, uh, you know, Seeing Herbert and how well he did, you know, those birds are going to start chirping if yeah. Fitzmagic doesn't do well this week. And so I, I think those Dolphins fans will probably, uh, you know, raise some hell until until they give Tua a shot. Yeah. So he might be a good stash for, you know, later in the year. Um, but, yeah, those are my, uh, my pickups. So, good deal. Yeah. Um, so we've already kind of touched on a little bit how Electric Monday Night's going to be. Uh, yeah. But let's talk about a few things to watch for the Ravens. Lucas, why don't you kick us off there? Yeah. Uh, you know, the Ravens are coming off solid 33-16 win against the Texans. Um, even before, I would say, the regular season even started, people were circling this game, right? It has potential oh, yeah. game of the year, uh, you know, tendencies. And, and we'll see. I mean, Two Madden cover athletes, mm-hmm. so that's going to be the battle. You know, is Pat and Lamar going to be able to sit in the pocket, and who's going to be the most accurate deep ball thrower out there, or is he going to, you know, go back to what he knows and, and start, you know, running the ball, which right. has been detrimental to us in the past. So, uh, you know, one thing that I also this is a side note, but they brought in Shea Patterson. Did you guys see that? Mm-hmm. He was a, a backup QB that we had in training camp. Mm-hmm. The Ravens brought him in two weeks ago to test them out right mm. so sneaky inside yeah. information probably yep. not i don't know i think that's interesting i think they're scared a little bit is it a smart move maybe but it'll be interesting to see how this pans out now yeah. on usa today there's also an article that i thought was interesting despite us being the super bowl champions uh we are now getting ousted in power rankings mm-hmm. by the ravens yeah. they're, they're going ahead and putting them ahead so whatever that's fine let them do let, it let us be yeah. underdog yeah. exactly uh, andrew what uh <laughs> what do you think uh we're gonna see in this game you know, 
I mean, I think the Chiefs are going to win. I think we'll get into that in a little bit. But, um, you know, some, like, keys for the Chiefs to win, I think we were talking about. I think stopping the run. Mm -hmm. You know, not only they got Ingram and J.K. Dobbins, but mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Um, I, I know he's improved as a passer, but I feel mm -hmm. like that's still probably where you need to try to keep him, get him to pass. Right. Sure. Um, get up early so they are forced to pass. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. score early. Um, we don't want them running the ball, you know, all day long. Right. So those are a couple of things I'm thinking about. And then hopefully we can pick up the protection for yeah. Patrick and protect him and give him some time, like you said. Yeah. And, you know, one thing during that Chargers game, I know it's kind of going back, but I, I, something he does amazing is just when he needs to run, he's just so – Perf like when he decides to take yeah. off, you know he's going to pick up the first. Yeah. yeah, it's calculated. It's, just like, it's so calculated, yeah. and and I like to see that. Obviously, we're all holding our breath when mm. he takes off, but it's it's very strategic, yeah. you know. And I don't want him to have to do all that, but I could see if he's getting pressured that his feet are going to end up playing into the victory. So we'll yeah. see how that happens. But definitely, yep. Um, yeah, but to, to kind of echo your point uh, about the power shift, like. Um, I just don't see how how you can say the Ravens are better than the Chiefs and let, until they beat them. You right. know, like everyone's talking about this being the next Brady Manning, but mm -hmm. I mean Lamar hasn't beaten him yet. Oh. It's not a rivalry until That's it's true. gone back and forth. And so, you know, I think a lot of Ravens fans will think you know this this will be the game that they get him. I'm super worried about it to be honest. Mm -hmm. sure. I mean, if we're being honest here, but uh, you know, again, I'm not going to bet against the Chiefs until they lose. So. Uh, we're what right at 11 straight uh it's tied the franchise yeah. record is that what it is yeah if we yeah. can win on monday yeah. uh, we'll have a franchise record for the longest winning streak so uh awesome. yeah we'll see but uh the ravens are coming off what it was a mm -hmm. 33 to uh, 33 16, 16. win against mm -hmm. the texans i mean i watched that game tape you know the texans just shot themselves in the foot i mean they fumbled the ball at like the 15 yard line and then the next yep. drive deshaun watson threw an interception so if we can keep you know control of the ball mm -hmm. if we can you know limit turnovers um, you know, I, and obviously we got the most clutch guy in the game. You know, if it's close, you never count Mahomes out. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. What are your What are your keys to victory this week, Lucas? Well, to kind of chime in with what you'd already said, you know, Andrew, it's going to be we're well oiled machine, but we have to start fast offensively. Mm -hmm. So where's those fuel additives out? Like right. where are they at? We <laughs> need the to get nitrous. them, get them <laughs> pumped in, <laughs> put the pedal to the metal, get going quickly. You know, between Dobbins, Ingram, and Lamar, I think. They had 230 yards rushing against the Texans. Wow. That's too much. That's too, too, too much. much. They broke the rushing record last year as a team. They had 3,300 3, yards. So that's going to be crucial to stop that early, make Lamar beat us in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, he Great. makes mistakes. He missed multiple uh, open passers when you're watching those highlights against the Texans. Like he missed Andrews in mm -hmm. a, for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to save the crucial time of possession in favor of the Chiefs. Yeah, um, we got blood to death. Uh, gosh, and that, that's kind of in the recipe of success for other teams against yeah. us, right? So if they yep. control the time possession, that will creep up on us. Um, and so then the last key of victory is protect the rock. We, we cannot turn the ball over. That's how the Texans lost. Knock on wood, we haven't had too many this year. But if they end up forcing that, I know Peters is going to be pissed off. Oh, he's going to have a vengeance. He's going to be, he's gonna be he had a beautiful pick against the Texans. He's going to want to pick off Patty. You know yep. him. He's going to run, run in his mouth all game. Oh, yeah. So protect the rock against players like that. And, and uh, as long as we start off fast, that should be – Crucial and, and a key to yeah. victory. Uh, so coming up, Andrew, uh, do you have a, a player you're watching on the offensive and defensive side of the ball for this game? Yeah, so I think I'm going to go kind of chalk on this. Um, okay. Just because I think in these, you know, big, high-intense matchups with two of the best teams in the league, you know, I think the best players tend to shine in yeah. these things. So on defense, I'm going to go with Honey Badger. Um, I, we'll see. I don't know exactly how, but I think he's going to have an impact on the game it could just be through leadership, you know, and yeah. stuff like that. Cause I mean, people are going to be hyped for this one. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, they're, yeah. they're listening, they're hearing that they're behind in the power rankings and stuff like that. So remaining calm, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be important yeah. um, on offense, Travis Kelsey, I think, mm -hmm. you know, in oh, games yeah. like this, go to your safety blanket because you know, emotions are going to be running yeah. high and you sure. really want to win, but man, there's nobody better in the league, you know, at tight end, I, I believe. And I that would be the guy I would, you know, be trying to find as much as I could. Yeah. So those are – it's chalk, but I think those two – it's hard oh, not to it. do chalk with the Chiefs. Yeah. Yeah. They're chalk pretty much across the board. <laughs> yeah. So, um, But that would be where I'd go. Okay, yeah, I totally agree on that Kelsey point. Uh, Darren mm -hmm. Fells yep. just ripped him apart last yep. week on the Texans. He looks really so, good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, soft spot always is Travis. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, for myself, 
I want to put it on Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes' shoulders. So I know Andy's not a technically player, right? Mm-hmm. But he's going to need to call a phenomenal game. That experience is really going to help. So with Andy Reid's expertise and then Showtime Mahomes, I mean, this guy lives to play under the lights. You know, we've seen True it that. time and time True. again. So let's let's see him unleash the cannon, which we have seen him do for multiple years. Yeah. But where has it been this year, right? Again, maybe you'd be let's, holding the, holding those cards close. Well, let's, yeah. let's play so, our yeah, aces yeah, here and, and exactly. let's get it it's going time. because <laughs> it is time. Pocket aces. Um, so I'm really excited to unleash the offensive potential within Marcus or Marcus G's with Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes against Marcus Peters, and then on defense. Frank Clark, he left early last game. He's going to be my defensive player to watch. He's going to be ticked off. We'll give him a couple IVs before the game. He's going to be hungry, smell mm-hmm. blood in the water, yep. and get Lamar early. So that's my offense and defensive players to watch. Yeah, for me, um, just something fun I want to watch is Tyreek against Marcus Peters. You know, mm-hmm. they, obviously they got uh, you know good familiarity with each other, going against each other for a couple of years early on in their careers. Um, obviously they drifted apart, but you know that bad blood's going to be there. They're going to be uh, itching to get after each other and. Uh, so I'm, I'm just excited to see that matchup. And then uh, on defense, I had two people. Um, first is MV Pinnell. He's back from his suspension. Yep. Okay. Uh, you know, we talked about that run game. Hopefully he can be a good stop yeah. there. But I think an underrated player, um, that this is how I think they're going to use him, but I, I we haven't seen it yet because rookies are always – uh, it, it takes him a while to get used to Bob mm-hmm. Sutton's defense. Or not Bob Sutton, excuse me. Spagnuolo's <laughs> defense. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I can't get him out of my head. Scarred me too He's much. tormented. That's yeah. for too many years. Uh, but yeah, so Willie Gay Jr. Uh, yeah. I, I think, yeah. to be honest, we drafted him to spy Lamar Jackson. I, I you know, And Deshaun Watson, obviously. But, uh, you know, he hasn't played too much. He had a block punt uh, in last game, and, you know, he, he played better. He's starting to see the field more. But I really do think we're going to unleash him in this game and have him spy Lamar. He's one of the fastest linebackers in the draft. He yep. ran, like, running back 40. Yep. Um, so I, I just think, uh, you know, that'll be a really good weapon for Spags. Um, to try to limit so the big plays from Lamar. Spags has a package for him, actually, and we got to see a little bit of it. I didn't, I don't know the exact terminology for it, but I was reading an Arrowhead Pride article. Mm-hmm. And when Damian Wilson got rocked a little bit and got stiff, he went out. Well, Willie Gay came in. Mm-hmm. He continuously played some more snaps after that in this new formation, more new package on defense. Yeah, right. So I could see Spags breaking that out. Good. And with his athleticism, right. why would you not? I know. Right? Which, on the Wilson topic, mm-hmm. right? I'm surprised he's not on the injury report. I know. My goodness. That was like, a hit, right? I was and he crazy. went stiff a he little did. bit. That was kind of scary. Yeah, yeah, that was on Herbert. Yeah, it was it Herbert. Herbert. Herbert like, got up. He's good. Yeah, he was good. So <laughs> I'm scared of him. Yeah, yeah I was surprised. Forward. Yeah, we'll see. But uh, all right, so after uh, the players to watch, let's get into score prediction. So we've been keeping track of these. Uh, and <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do Sorry, very well man. last week. But Lucas, you're plus 15. Last week, you were 38 to 20. Mm-hmm. Um, I And so you're plus 20 overall. Correct. I was plus 16 last week, uh, plus 27 overall. I predicted 42 to 13. Uh, and then last week, Tom predicted 31 to 17, which is plus 14. So their plus, guests are plus 26 overall. Um, and so I'm in last. Uh, so, um, Andrew, what did, what's your score prediction? Well, I didn't realize that this the guest just carried over. So there's some pressure here. Oh, yeah. So I can blow <laughs> still, this up for still need to come up with the, the yeah. vet for this. I should have yeah, we'll, we'll talked to, talk to Casey the future that. guests. So I might blow <laughs> this up too, but... Um, you know, I think there's going to be some offense. Um, I'm going to go 38-24 Chiefs. Like it. So, nice. All right, right on. Down. Well, you know, I got the lead here, so I think I want to keep <laughs> – I'm not going to be too conservative, but okay. I do feel like it's going to be a nail-biter again. I don't want it to be. You know, my gut wants me to say, just, hey, we're going to blow them out of the water. But I'm going to say it's going to be a close nail-biter, 31-27 Chiefs. Nice. Come down to that fourth quarter. Yeah, and I think um, – so, I, again, I went back and watched that Texans tape from last week. They were really good at holding them to field goals. And so Justin Tucker was out sure. there all game. I think if we can do the same, uh, we, we'd have a good chance. And, again, you know, this is the one game that I think a lot of Chiefs' kingdom is really scared about. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if they dropped this game. Uh, but, again, I'm not betting against the Chiefs nope. and, until they prove me wrong. So I'm going to go 33-30. Chiefs victory. Uh, Chiefs are actually three and a half point underdogs uh, going into this game. Mahomes, fun stat, five zero and one in his career as an underdog. So no maybe way. we got going, got that going for us. So wow, good yeah, deal. We'll see how it goes. But uh, I'm excited. Yeah. It's gonna be good. <laughs> yeah. Well, that does it for uh, week three of Talk and Chop. Uh, whether you're listening on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, make sure to subscribe. Uh, and follow us along all season. Uh, we'll be having uh, a lot of 
more guests coming up, uh, yeah. some of top, uh, some top execs and personalities in Kansas City. Andrew, thank you so much for being with thank us you. today. It was Appreciate awesome, you guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Make sure to check out uh, Pro Athlete. Yeah, you know, get on there Just right check now. Check us out. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> give, give him a look. Yeah. Uh, but as always, right? Yeah, as always, go Chiefs.